Hello guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my videos. And here we guys, the worst to best Akuma in shit of life. Now, the one I did before this is actually quite old. It actually didn't have Sirachi in it, and a lot of the Kumas have been changed since then. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully, hopefully you'll see the next one, guys. Let's get right into it. Alright, so coming in last place is actually be Satori. Satori's gonna be coming in last place because Satori is actually not that good anymore. Now, I know they did buff the third move of Satori, which makes it do more damage, but Satori is just it's such a defensive bloodline that actually has almost no offense whatsoever besides a third ability. If people use Satori, they almost always use it only for the third ability third ability alone and i feel like that is that, uh, compared to the other akumas if people only use it for that ability it doesn't make it really that good when compared to other akumas despite that satori actually is useful it actually is still a, quite a good bloodline it's just not nearly as good as the other akumas in the game it still is quite useful you know you, you still get the m1s you still get the special m1s you still get the instant auto dodge on the first ability they actually made it instant no longer has hand signs but the sucky thing is it puts the second ability on a global cooldown which actually sucks is actually really bad when a bloodline does that to itself because it makes it just harder to use the bloodline overall and the c-spec is almost useless unless you want to run away from people all right so second last is actually going to be shindai now i know a lot of you guys might be expecting this but some of you guys may not in case you guys aren't informed, Shindai is actually a lot worse than it used to be, and it's not nearly as good as the other Akumas, but it still is a good bloodline, as all of the Akumas are actually good. Now, the second ability here is actually going to be the best ability of Shindai now, but they actually nerfed the AoE even more than they already nerfed it, so now it's just a huge damage burst if you can manage to hit that ability. Uh, most of the time, they have to be stunned beforehand, so you just do third into second, it actually is a big damage burst. The first ability is actually a lot worse than it used to be, because it no longer has a counter onto it, and the damage of the clothes is actually a lot less than it used to be. Now, the C-Spec is also pretty cool, but the C-Spec, it doesn't work half the time. As you guys can see, they do not have the Susanos on them in, in this mode, so... Uh, they really, really, really did nerf Shindai. The the, honestly, the best abilities are actually going to be the third ability in the second now. And compared to the, the Shindai beforehand, this is not nearly the same. All right, so next up is going to be the original Akuma. Now, the original Akuma is actually pretty much just a worse Bankai. But some cool things about Akuma that you guys can actually do, you can actually customize it. So as you guys can see, I have like a pink arm right here. And you, as you go through the stages, you can actually start to see your uh, customized Susanoo. So if you guys don't know that, you can't actually customize your uh your akuma here as you guys see i got the pink boy but when it comes to the abilities here it pretty much it's just a worse bankai so it pretty much does everything that bankai does but worse first ability so first ability is a stun now the stun is actually bankai stun but it doesn't stun for as long it doesn't do as much damage second ability is an all dodge like bankai's first ability but it doesn't teleport you back it doesn't last as long third ability is pretty much just a senbon ability it's kind of like bankai's third but you actually actually have to aim at people and hit them now the c-spec is actually one of the best parts of akuma if you actually drag in like i would say around like three plus people you can actually one shot them immediately but it's very hard to do now because there is no burn damage on it but you still can one shot someone really really nice so akuma is a very solid bloodline in case you're stuck with it or in case you actually want it all right, so next up is that should be Ryan Akuma. Now, Ryan Akuma is going to be coming above Akuma, and I'm pretty sure this is fourth place or fifth place. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's fifth. So, in fifth place here, Ryan Akuma is actually quite a good bloodline. The third ability is a hand sign block break range damage that actually does it does quite a bit of damage. It actually does block break and auto tracks, and it is an iframe, which is one of the best parts of it. Now, the main thing about Ryan that I actually do not like is going to be the C spec and the weapon spec. The C spec and the weapon spec are pretty much just a log damage ability that just gives you iframes. So it's just iframe spam pretty much. So if you're really, really good at timing iframes, maybe Ryan Akuma will be best in your hands. But the first ability is, in fact, a counter ability that actually does quite a bit of damage. People hit you. Second ability is a, a Chidori ability. So if you manage to hit someone with it, it does quite a bit of damage. But it doesn't. it's not really a combo ability. You just use it in the off chance. So if you really, really like iframes, get Ryan Akuma. Coming in fourth place, that should be Shiver Akuma. Now, Shiver Akuma is actually a very, very, very good bloodline. Now, when it comes to Shiver Akuma, it is mainly meant for just defensive abilities, but it actually is quite good because the first two abilities are actually stunts if you actually manage to hit them. But some, they're actually very hard to hit because the first ability has a lot of hand signs and you can auto dodge inside of them now. You used to not be able to do that, but you can now. But they actually are quite good abilities. They are quite good stuns, but they aren't the, really the best part of Shiver. They're just add-ons. The best part of Shiver is actually the C-Spec, which actually, um, you know, you go you go into the C-Spec right here, and you can pretty much infinitely run around. It's like Reality Warp, but it's a C-Spec. So if you guys like that, Shiver Kuba is going to be perfect for you. Also, the third ability is actually a counter ability that actually does quite a bit of damage. It is quite good. But the best thing of Shiver is actually the Weapon Spec, where it actually is a, it's a small Kamui ability that actually does quite a bit of damage. And there's actually a fun thing you could do with it. Well, not really fun for other people, but you can infinitely, you know, stun people by resetting after you do it. So that's not very cool, but people do it all the time. 
But yeah, Shiver Coop is actually just a very good overall good bloodline, and it is very, very annoying. One of the most annoying in the game. Now, next up is going to be Rizakuma. Rizakuma is going to be in third place for a multitude of reasons. I know Rizakuma's C spec in third ability has been nerfed a lot, but Rizakuma is still quite good. The first ability is pretty much a counter and auto dodge combined, and you can block break them inside of the ability and things like that, and you can use C spec. So, it pretty much is just an auto dodge and counter combined, which is actually very, very good because it does last quite a while. Now, the second ability can be useful in combos and things like that, but it can be annoying when you teleport to someone that you didn't actually want to teleport to, which happens quite often, honestly, which doesn't make the ability that good when compared to Bankai. Now, the third ability is actually the, the, still the best ability of Riser. It actually doesn't do nearly as much damage as it used to. It only does around, I would say, like 60k now when it used to do like 100k, but it still is a good ability to use, and overall, it is still quite good. Now, the C-Spec, of course, is a mode drain ability where if you hit someone, it drains their mode. Not as good as it used to be, but it still is very, very good. And it has no weapon spec besides, like, a dash ability. Now, next up is going to be actually going to be Sriracha. Now, Sriracha is going to be next because all of Sriracha abilities are instant. Now, there are some people that actually think Sriracha needs a buff. I am not one of them. Sriracha is actually very good right now in the place it is. I feel like it needs changes, not necessarily buffs and nerfs, but changes. Now, when it comes to Sriracha's abilities, the second ability is only stun global cooldown when it really shouldn't because it's not really a stun ability, it's just a damage ability, and it actually is impossible to combo someone because it knocks them so far back. So, that needs removed off the stun global cooldown. The first ability, however, needs added to the stun global cooldown because it is an actual stun ability that stuns someone for more than one second. So, the second ability needs removed from the stun global cooldown. The first one needs added. A lot of people actually use Sriracha, and it actually is quite good, but the third ability you can actually be damaged during it, so it is a counter, but you take damage during it, which actually makes it not that good. But, let's be real guys, nobody really uses Sriracha for the abilities, they use it for the mode. C-Spec is a ranged block break that actually does quite a bit of damage, it actually cheese seals people. The throw, it has special throwables that look at this, look at all the damage that it does. It's like a Minikaze third ability, but shorter. Now, the weapon spec is actually the best part of Sriracha, where you do a weapon spec, it actually steals stamina, which is, I'm pretty sure... Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the only stamina draining ability in the entire game. Besides, you know, the ones that are obvious. So, like, when it comes to actual abilities that do damage, this is pretty much the only ability that actually drains stamina, it cheese seals, it block breaks, it does everything. And overall, Sriracha's mode is actually a really, really, really amazing. And the abilities are comparable at best. Now, the Lord Bankai himself. I'm sure Vex might watch this video. What's up, dude? What's up, Lord Bankai? But when it comes to Bankai here, Bankai is still the best bloodline in the game. I know Book jokes around about how balanced it is, but yeah, it's not. It's not really balanced. Let, come on, let's like let's be real, guys. They never really nerfed Bankai that much. The third ability was changed, so it only hits two people instead of three. Which in 1v1s that literally makes no difference unless they're using clones so when it comes to bankai really the only thing that was nerfed was the c spec which still drains mode it still block breaks it still does a lot of damage and you still actually have the weapon spec i know a lot of people don't think bankai has a weapon spec but it does it is a cheese seal mode drain weapon spec and people don't actually use it when they should it is actually really 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 good now the obviously the best part of bankai are the abilities where first ability is a very long auto dodge it's one of the longest in the game comparable to dio Seco's auto dodge second ability is one of the best stuns in the game that actually stuns for quite a while is a low hand sign ability that actually scared me low hand sign ability that actually does a decent amount of damage third ability is just a giant damage burst that does like 50k damage 40k out of mode and it's pretty much almost impossible to avoid unless you're like jumping through the air like a, a like a maniac or a monkey climbing on trees and things like that. So overall, Bankai is actually still extremely good. Anyways, guys, that's be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, got more sex, guys. Bye bye.